Today we have the great pleasure of being joined by Dr. Quinton Hennig, Dr. Rail Lipson, and we're going to be talking about paleoplasis. At TriStar Gold, we get asked frequently, what is a paleoplasa? What is it about Castellanus oleosus and these other deposits that makes them unique and different from other gold deposits around the world? The short story is a paleoplasa is a gold deposit that was in the mountain range, was eroded away through time into alluvial fans, into river channel deposits, or into near shore beach deposits which were then buried very deep for a very long time. Um, hopefully then resurfacing into a location where we can find them and exploit them. And Quinton, can you tell us a bit about these unique deposits and what they've contributed to our history? Yes, uh, well thank you Nick. Uh, first of all, although they are unique and they are rare, um, they've contributed a significant component of historical production here on Earth. Nearly 40% of all the gold that's been produced over human history has come out of the Witwatersrand Basin in South Africa and uh, the Tarqua in Ghana and a few other paleoplast deposits from around the world. Okay, so there's there's a few examples like this. These deposits, uh, you know, they're not they're not common, but they contribute a, a lot of gold. You can think of uh, the Witwatersrand, for example, as the Saudi Arabia of uh, gold on Earth. All right, so uh, I would add one thing to, to what you said about their formation. While the, the uh, physical contribution of gold through, through these alluvial processes and fluvial processes you described is important, there's also a potential for a syngenetic component that is also important, and then mod later modification that can happen. Oh, that's very interesting. Thanks for that, Quentin. Regarding the modifications that can happen around, these deposits are all ancient. They are CDS 2.1 billion years old, with ones around 2.7, 2.8 billion years old. Most people can't really comprehend what those numbers mean. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, what could happen to the rocks in that period of time and how they can be modified? So let's pick up uh, with the deposits that have been buried, which preservation is extremely important uh, because of these long geological time periods. Um, uh, if, if the deposits uh, uh, come to the surface too early, we would have nothing to find today. These deposits during the compressional phases become uh, extremely, can become extremely deformed, become folded, faulted, um, and metamorphosed. In other words, they change their character. Uh, and included uh, in, in some of the changes that happen is that um, there are hideous intrusions, uh, in other words, hot magma that might come up and once again change the character of these uh, types of deposits. So what we see at the surface today uh, is really uh, a frozen in history of a long period of deformation and changes that have happened to the rocks. Now these uh, Paleoplasa deposits, because they have been undergone so much, uh, such a long period of uh, geological change, have now become modified, and to a greater or lesser extent, uh, each of the Paleoplasa deposits that we see today are to some extent uh, modified Paleoplasters. Okay, thanks, that's really, really interesting. Can you talk a little bit about the modifications you've seen, particularly in CDS? Well, Castello Sonios uh, um, has had, uh, uh, some of the gold has been mobilized. So what we find is uh, gold um, uh, both in the conglomerate as well as uh, possibly out of the conglomerate. Um, there's a lot of hematite which has been pushed through the, through the rocks as well. And so there are, there are different components to the style of mineralization that we find at uh, CDS. And you're finding with the work you've been doing in collaboration with the TriStar team that we are learning and starting to understand these different processes and modifications that have happened to this deposit? Yeah, I think we're still in the early stages because these are complex, uh, complex processes, but I think that we've got the tools in place to, uh, to, to start to separate out these different styles of mineralization and, uh, and define them. Okay, no, I'd agree. I think we've got a very exciting future ahead with Casella de Sonia. So if you'd like to see more information on, on this and other videos on paleoplasters, please feel free to visit us at tristargold.com where you'll find this and other videos on the paleoplaster topic.